So I was gonna go work on the run-in at Adri's mom's house, but then I realized this is what happened. This goat somehow tore the gate off the hangar. So now I gotta fix that. It's emu egg season again. I have six emu eggs in the incubator. I tried to hatch out my emus. Six eggs, so there's three in each. And I wanted to show you guys, I don't, don't really think that there's a huge, uh, I'm also hatching out some of my chicken eggs. I don't think there's a huge community yet of people that need to know <laughs> about how to incubate emu eggs. They're still a fairly uncommon pet, but I do feel thanks to social media, a huge part and some viral emus that they are becoming increasingly unpopular. So becoming increasingly popular, I can't even speak. This is how I'm hatching them out. This is the Nurture Right incubator. Probably one of the most widely available incubators. You can get it at like Tracker Supply, on Amazon, all of that. Um, it's not the cheapest incubator, but I've been using one for years and years and it is definitely my favorite. I feel it's like the most reliable and low maintenance. You wanna set your temperature to like 97.5, right around there, 30% um, humidity. I also keep um, a Govi little monitor in there. It's a little tiny disc um, that measures the temperature and humidity and sends alerts to your phone if there's an issue. I actually broke down and ordered uh, the specific emu riser and divider for this incubator. There's a bunch of people that make them small businesses um, on Etsy. And so I'm waiting for that to come in. They're kind of pricey. If you don't know, the male is the bird that actually lays on the nest. And for basically around 55 days, um, they're sort of comatose, <laughs> more or less. Uh, it can be really concerning for some people. They lay their necks on the ground. Yeah, and so it's, it's kind of taxing on the males which is why I incubate instead. So these six, I didn't want to wait any longer to get in the incubator. Every day you wait, it just decreases the odds by a little bit. I haven't even received any shipping updates on my order. So I came up with this plan. This is a pool noodle. I just happened to have a bunch of these in our craft room and sliced one half of it down the middle so that I could slide this lid into it um, and cut it to fit this and it's been holding for days. So it seems to be working. So the only thing I'm really looking forward to though, um, and I would almost say, you know, just keep this because this was like a buck. But I will say um, the one I ordered with the specific emu tray divider in it means it's like this, but made for emu eggs, um, means that I can use the egg turner feature with this. And so right now I'm having to lift this multiple times a day and hand rotate the eggs. Going to go with the more expensive option because it has the divider in it. But a lot, a lot of people end up just hand turning their eggs. So FYI, this does seem to work and is pretty inexpensive. I talked about how I had the pool noodles on here while I was waiting for these to come in. But I will say, are those pool noodles being used for three days, almost four? And they were amazing. Like it held temp and humidity perfectly. I'm gonna hang on to them just in case. The part that came in is this. You can see it's obviously a 3D printed piece. So this riser here that raises this lid up that much. So now you can tell there's way more space. So like, oh, let me back up and show you. So this is the height of a normal incubator. And then you've got this extra height for the emu eggs. And then also in there is the emu egg divider holder um, and so it can be used as a turner so instead of opening it up and hand turning which is what those arrows were for uh, now these spaces are bigger than what comes with it so the eggs can sit in there and then this thing rotates on a schedule so the whole thing spins and the eggs move that's great um, right now I'm struggling a little bit just because I guess the pool noodles required more water to keep this at an ideal humidity. And so uh, I might have to find a way to suck some water out of there or something because it's making it too humid at the moment. 
nothing like being in the shower at 9 a.m. with a screaming baby when you get a call that all of your horses are out. I know how they got out too. Totally. I know exactly where. And I know which one did it. My draft horse, for sure. And I know why they did it. Because yesterday, I gave them extra orchard grass, but less alfalfa. Only time I've ever done that. And somehow, they knew. So, now Baby and I are about to go do some horse wrangling. We have an update. The emus are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> uh, okay, well, the emus that you've been following for a while, where did they just go? <laughs> An exciting update. There they are. Yay. There, in the trees. They are finally out with everybody. And so far it seems to be going okay. Also, I'm, I just used this. I don't know if you guys will even remember. It's been so long. But we've always had issues finding ways to feed the emus where these guys can't get to it. And we have tried and failed and tried and failed. And in my emu group, they suggest using one of these things, uh, which are usually really expensive. It's an easy feeder. It's waterproof. It holds 50 pounds of feed. But they're like 100 bucks sometimes. I got this on sale for 49 at Tractor Supply, so I was very excited. It looks like it's working. It's a great way if you've got, yeah, like combinations of animals like we do. So I gotta add more food to it though, because you do have to keep it full in order for them to be able to reach it. They can fit their heads in these holes to eat and everybody else cannot. It's time to start planting the front porch. Time for a nap too, but I thought you might be happy hanging out in this. No? Okay, so we're gonna take a nap. We've got these plants, supervisors, and all of these pots to use. You might be on a farm with your stroller if you have your cup holders filled with eggs. I don't know if any of you noticed, I noticed it in every video I posted, uh, that our house was covered in like green grossness and just really needed to be power washed. And that's one of the things I did <laughs> while I was away from YouTube. I power washed my house. So exciting. But it really like does make a remarkable difference. But anyways, a couple of big things I'm going to talk about while I feed everybody. <laughs> Instead of listening to my Pandora like I have been. First is this. We have a new pig. I know you probably can't even keep track of the pigs because we're just constantly like taking them in and adopting them out. This is Starbucks. He was sent here by someone that watches the channel actually. Absolutely her baby, but work, life changed. And uh, after, gosh, I feel like a couple years of us like planning for him to come here. He arrived and he's been fantastic. He's such a good pig. He's so friendly. He fits right in with everybody. He's leading the pack right here. So the only problem I have with him is he's in this big yard space right now, not out with the other pigs. He tries to follow me out of the driveway. <laughs> That's a problem. We have thrown in the towel on getting the fencing done ourselves. Well, Ben. Still thinks that he can do it all by himself. I think that it was unrealistic from the start. Asking too much of him, he doesn't have the time, whatever. And in the meantime, the animals are just not having access to the tons of acreage that we could be offering them. So we've opted to hire someone to help. So hopefully he's been doing some fencing here and then also doing some fencing at my mom's place because she needed some new fence lines for the horses. So that's great. Very exciting. We can't wait to actually get this project done. 